Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 13th and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see the Hawaiian Islands down here. We got British Columbia, Washington, Oregon. We've got another system knocking on our door here. We've got another one coming on the day Monday and then we've got a typhoon entering the westerlies all the way back across the western Pacific here. It's going to be moving across the Pacific Ocean at the Pacific Northwest. Uh, typhoon Bolo then. We'll take a look at those details here in a moment. This is the Himawari satellite. You can see Bolo and out there. It is now weakening and entering the westerlies. You can see it's the associated moisture will be traversing across Pacific Ocean. Pretty typical in fall months to be impacted by remnants of tropical typhoons here as they move across Pacific and we'll look at just where that atmospheric river may go. You can see Japan would be right here. There's the Aleutian Islands. Now, looking at Bolivan when it was at peak strength there, you can see the very clear eye there. You'd get a nice stadium effect. If you were in there, you'd see the huge dome of clouds all around you. And the eye wall is especially violent in these storms here. You're probably looking at 180 mile per hour winds sustained. And you know, once you went through one side of it and then the other, you'd get a rapid wind reversal there for damaging winds. So interesting stuff. You can Google the stadium effect there if you want to see more on that. Take a look at Seattle yesterday, 65 degrees. Nice sunny skies out out there. Great day. Another great day coming here. A lot of sunshine out there for much of the region. Some high clouds will be spreading up over the areas. We go through the afternoon and evening tonight. But yeah, we'll look at some of those temperatures here in a moment. And if you want a nice affordable home weather station, record all this crazy weather we get here across Pacific Northwest. Click on that link down below to save 10% off. Great smartphone app, all solar powered and wireless. As we go through this morning, you're, if you're out there across some of the Cascades, the Gorge and some of the Cascades of Oregon, you know some of those uh, gusty winds here coming through the east. Nothing too extremely crazy there. But it should be dying, and it should be dying down as you go through the day today. But as we go through <clears throat> on into Saturday morning and then eventually Saturday afternoon, you can see that next system kind of pushing up to the north of Vancouver Island there as well. Some blustery winds possible at that system also. But the, the better shot of some wind will be occurring on Monday. And I just kind of wanted to point this out as well. Sunday afternoon does show some offshore winds coming through the gaps of the Cascades of Washington, Oregon as well. We'll look at those winds here <clears throat> for the system on Monday coming up here in a bit. Now, looking at precipitable water on last night's GFS, there is Bolivan out there across the Western Pacific. Again, there's Japan, Aleutian Islands, there's Alaska, British Columbia, and Washington. You can see the system pushing up here as we go through tonight on into tomorrow morning. Then we get a stronger storm that's going to come into the region here with an atmospheric river on and through the day Monday. Some blustery conditions possible there. But did you see that? This is the remnants of that typhoon pointing an atmospheric river up into British Columbia. So we're showing some ridging in advance of this, but confidence is not that high just yet. This could be a bit of a dirty ridge here, meaning there could be clouds streaming into the region here, which could limit some of our sunshine here across Pacific Northwest. So we'll, we'll have to watch this closely because you can see by the time it gets to the end of next week this atmosphere curve will be sagging south but it is weakening at that time by the time it goes across washington and oregon now this is looking at the gfs 500 millibar heights and you can see the initial system rolling through Friday night here, and then we set up for this atmospheric river and a stronger system as we go through the day Monday shown there. And then we potentially build that ridge in front of what would be Bolivan's remnants moving towards British Columbia here. But there is going to be some disagreement between, I have a hunch here, over the next couple of days, it's just how strong this ridge develops and how close this cloud shield and this precipitation is going to be to the Pacific Northwest. And I'll show you what the European has to show on that here in a moment. There's GFS also showing a little bit of ridging after that as well as we go through about October 22nd and then the GFS wants to pattern change things here across Pacific Northwest and much of the West Coast for some interesting troughing showing up towards the end of October. Purely fantasy at this point however this is looking at 850 mobar so if the GFS were to come to fruition here goes first play through the Monday system there and then you can see things warm up in advance with this ridge even some offshore winds showing up there some pretty warm temperatures aloft this would be at about 5,000 feet above the surface. Hawaii would be down here and there's Washington, Oregon. You can see that warm up there west of the Cascades. And then we kind of sneak that system through there and then we build the ridge again across Pacific Northwest all the way through October 22nd and 23rd. So something to watch. If we scroll far enough out, you can kind of see that chillier air aloft arriving with some of that troughing through the end of October as well. Purely fantasy, as I mentioned. Now this is looking at the European on the left versus the GFS on the right. 24 hour running precipitation totals. As we go through tonight, you can see some of that precip occurring for Seattle. You know, a tenth of an inch, two tenths of an inch, a little bit for the Willamette Valley, better amounts for the Coastal Range here as well. And then as we scroll through the day Saturday, 
is that next atmospheric river. Check it out. There it comes on Monday. You can see some pretty juicy totals all the way from Northern California up into British Columbia. Pretty good model agreement, actually. You can actually see the rain shadow in effect there off to the northeast of the Olympic Mountains there as well as we go through the day Monday. And then you can see the next atmospheric river out here associated with Bolivan. And it's going to be kind of close here. <laughs> you know, you want to talk about this ridge in here, but that's this cloud shield is going to be pretty nearby. So we'll, we'll take a better look at this tomorrow and we'll try to get a little bit mo better model agreement there as we go. As you can see, the European wants to continue systems pretty close by all the way on in through the 10 day period here. Now this is looking at daily two meter max temperature. Check out some of these temperatures across Western Washington and Oregon for today up into the lower seventies. Get out there and enjoy that while you can, you know, this time of year, these nice days become pretty few and far between. Let's take a look here as we go on in through Saturday. You you can see uh, cooling down a bit Sunday going up towards, uh, you know, bouncing back a little bit there Sunday, not bad, but then that system will roll through here on Monday and then Tuesday here, Wednesday, Thursday, or we'll be warm back up again. You know, who knows? We're going to kind of be close to that next atmospheric river setting up out there. So we'll take a look at that again in a little bit more detail tomorrow. This is looking at Tillamook airport. If you can see here, it's just some blustery conditions, nothing too crazy, nothing to be too worried about at all. But you, you might notice that as you go through the day Monday, this is for Hoquiam near the Washington coastline as well. Seattle, maybe some blustery conditions that system rolls through here on Monday. Also, this is Tillamook Airport. Check it out. Yeah, up towards an inch of rain there in a 24 hour period. And this would be for that Monday system there. This is Hoquiam, Washington, about an inch of rain there also. Seattle, Tacoma, you're looking, you know, half an inch, seven tenths of an inch there. Not bad. Definitely a rainy day, however. Portland International, even showing up a little bit more there in the control run. Look at that, nine tenths of an inch of rain in a 24 hour period with that Monday system rolling through the area. Now, looking at the six to 10 day, that ridge is kind of showing up here in the prediction center all the way through October 22nd. So we'll watch this one. This could change, especially up here for northwest portions of the Pacific Northwest. We'll watch that closely again tomorrow. As I mentioned, six to 10 day temperature outlook. We're bound to be above average, especially with the southwest flow. Even if we do get clouds over the area, we're likely to be above average through this time period. Now, this is looking way off into fantasy land here, but I wanted to show you this. The CFS runs four times a day, and it goes ridiculously far off into the future. So you got to kind of take it with a grain of salt here. But you can see it actually keeps us pretty active here across Pacific Northwest through November, December, and January. And this goes 2023 to 2024. You can kind of see the dates up here. And then uh, kind of, you know, maybe a little bit above average across some of the coastal areas. But you can see things starting to dry out here across some of the higher terrain as we go through January and February. And then look at this signal here, January, February, March. February, March, April, kind of a, a, a El Nino signature here, starting to emerge here in some of the models off through the extended across the Pacific Northwest. It'd be pretty exceptionally dry, as you can see there. And this goes all the way on through March, April, and May here. So next spring, a very high confidence that we are definitely going to be warmer than we were the, uh, last year, for sure. I mean, El Nino tends to bring some quite warm late winter and early spring activity here across Pacific Northwest. You can kind of see that in the fantasy CFS outlook there. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to do the Eclipse video here next. We'll talk about what we can expect. And we've got several more systems to go through here. We'll continue to watch the remnants of that typhoon here moving across, bringing that atmospheric river. How much ridging will occur in front of that system? You know, Good question here. And I have a feeling we'll start to get a better idea of that tomorrow. So we'll take a closer look in the model runs tomorrow also. So anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. Check out the California Weather Watch page. Go ahead and go over there and subscribe if you would. Let's get that up and running. Get the algorithm going. Get... Um, you know, get the information out to everybody along the West Coast here so we can keep everybody aware of what is to come. But anyway, um, yeah, I will talk to you guys here in the Eclipse video in a minute. And otherwise, I will speak to you tomorrow in the normal briefing.